Welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights 2 Mask of the Betrayer. This is Big Los. So off camera, I rested up, and then we put all the buffs back on. All the ones that were stripped from the previous battle. So let's go inside. And since it is the daytime, we won't be able to go to the Shadow Plane just yet. And all these spectators are saying that I'm a curse just like the tales. And they're asking the goddess to protect them. So, instead of going to the Shadow Plane right away to go to the Death God's Vault, let's go and chat with the witches and find out a little bit more about our affliction. And here starts Act 2. Oku is a powerful fake creature who favors the fighter class. While he can't use weapons or armor, his claws and hide will become stronger as he gains levels. Oku is also capable of wearing amulets and rings. Oku automatically gains levels when he gains enough experience, not so much learning new abilities as he is remembering long-forgotten ones. Okay, so that's good to remember. We will talk to Oku later when we go outside. We unfortunately have to add him to our party before we're able to speak with him and gain any other information. So before we do that, we could go into the veil, but before we do that, let's go talk to the witches because technically they were hiding Magda and her theater troupe from us for some strange reason. Maybe they were reasoning that they were protecting her from us because we were somehow dangerous. Alright, well, let's go on up here. And it's too bad they didn't voice act a lot of these scenes. Because they would be pretty good voice acted. They give a lot of information. That's why I'm reading them all. Alright, so let's go up here and talk to them. Abomination. I warned you, Shiva. I smelled the wrongness upon him at the theater. No, that's the West Harbor stench. Tell me the truth, foreigner. Did you know what you were when you came to our city? No. And I still don't. I don't think it matters which one you choose. You are a spirit eater, an abomination, an affront to the spirits and the gods. You are a monster out of ancient tales. Not every spirit eater has been a monster, Kazumika. Not at the beginning. At least tell me what a spirit eater is. Please. We know little of them. No spirit eater has walked Rashomon in living memory. They were monsters, devourers of spirits and souls, boogeymen and children's tales. Some were men, some women, some were even children. Wherever they walked, they hungered and fed, and the land died. No matter their intentions, all spirit eaters ended the same. Their hunger turned in upon themselves, and they were destroyed, utterly consumed. The hunger within me, can it be controlled? Perhaps, if children's stories are to be believed, your hunger can be directed... But it will grow if indulged, and it will finally overwhelm you. And if you resist it, the hunger will destroy you anyway. You will starve, and your own hunger will turn upon you, consuming you from within. How did I become a spirit eater? Was it something that happened in the barrow? Perhaps you can answer that question best, monster. Did you anger our gods, defile our land? Few punishments are truly undeserved. Hush, Kazimika. Some say that the curse passed from one spirit eater to the next, but no spirit eater has been seen in over a hundred years. Beyond that, we know little. Those who kept such secrets are many years dead. There must be some way to defeat this hunger. None. You will be hunted and despised wherever you go and you will die unmourned in some lonely crag, as befits any ravening monster. If there is any hope to be found, it would be amongst those who have fought your kind. Amongst spirits, not mortals. 
My sister speaks of the woodman, the living soul of the ashen wood. He fought your kind, and he brought them all low. If the woodman fought spirit eaters, why would he agree to help me? He may not, child, for all your good intent. The Ashenwood lies several days sailing upriver to the north, and the winter snows have already begun to fall. I will send word to our shipwright, Vassal, that he should make a boat available for trade. Look for him at the docks and tell him that I sent you. We have an outpost on the Ashenwood shore, led by a witch called Delenka. She is a hard-bitten woman and distrustful of foreigners. Sounds like some other witches I know. Virtuous and wise, you mean? In a county of scheming hags, jealous spirits, and monsters like yourself, mercy and naivete are luxuries, bought with the lives of those we protect. One more thing. I have released the dwarf woman, Magda, and she has returned to her theater. My sisters disagree with me in this, but I trust in your good intent. Well, thanks. Find the woodman, Captain. Learn the secrets of your kind, and you may escape their fate. Yeah, looks like Sophia gained a level. We got 4,000 XP for just talking to them. And well if the decision was mine, Spirit Eater, I would not suffer you to walk among us. You would be hurled from the cliff as we did to traitors and monsters of old. Yeah, like that witch we discovered. Your bones would snap, and perhaps your skull would burst if you were lucky. But more likely, you would simply lie on your shattered back, with your bones protruding from your flesh, and we would listen to your moans and jeer from the clifftop as you died. Underneath all your malice, you have the good of your people at heart. And for that, I forgive you. Because that gives us three points towards the good. I pray that you make a mistake, monster. And Shiva sees the truth. Then we will see how well you fare. Greetings and well met. Do us all a mercy, spirit eater. And cast yourself into the river. You can listen to our rejoicing as you drown. The Ashenwood lies far to the north, Captain, and your hunger will not ease with time. What keeps you here? Let's see. Do you know Leanna well? A quiet woman. She followed our laws and made no trouble, established herself at the Vale, and was well liked by the patrons, though she had few friends to speak of apart from Magda. Amongst the foreigners, she was called the White Lady for her, s for her silver hair and her habit of wearing pale robes. I thought her a wizard, but harmless. Caught up in her own affairs, she has lived at the Vale for as long as I remember, and I have never seen her leave. Why do you wear a mask? Let me barter your question for another. Why do you think we wear masks? Alright, if you answer right, you get XP. So I think we're gonna do three. You wear a mask to become a witch and to lose the person you once were. Yes, we get 300 XP for that. Great. We struggle always to become the mask, and to leave behind the farm girl, like Katya, or the scrawny dockside waif, as Kazimika once was. Some of us try harder than others, but the eldest, those who have worn the mask for so long that they remember themselves only as pimple-faced girls, strangers from long ago. For us, the mask has become truth. Your city has a darker side, a shadowy reflection where some things are different. Yes, within our walls, our bonds between the sunlit world and the plane of shadow are easily sundered. Tell me, did you see the vault? Does it loom in your dreams as it does in mine? You see the vault in your dreams? I dreamed of a tree that rose from the vaults, a tree conceived in love, but bearing sacrilege and suffering as its fruit. It sees are with us still, scattered to the wind. I saw three such seeds, but one became divided by its own will. They chased each other endlessly, blown by wind and storm. And wherever they took root, they passed their blight to other seeds, 
and I saw that one day the tree would be born from the vault again. What do you know about the vault? Only that it was built by the priests of the dead. Not Kelimvor's faithful, but the servants of the wicked god who came before. Many die upon the Golden Way, and most are not of our faith. They want their bodies to be buried by a priesthood that they know. The priests of the dead used this truth to barter their way into our city. Then they abused our hospitality, tearing open portals to the Plain of Shadow, and building their vault in secret. Is there something special about Molson Tear? Some bond with the plane of sh with the Shadow Plane? Molson Tear is shrouded in mist, robed in gloom. Such places are always closer to the Plane of Shadow. But the portals were opened by the priests of the dead. They have shifted with time, as shadows will, flitted in and out of homes, dragging unsuspecting folk from a darkened closet to a nightmare of shadow. Many people disappear in Molson Tear. Who knows where they go, or whether they wander the plane of shadow even now? Let's talk about something else. Of course, this hallowed ground is no place to speak of shadows. Yeah, let's go. Farewell. Alright. Well, since it is still daytime, according to that little time meter down there, it looks like it's about noon. We got plenty of time. And we still got a bunch of spirit energy. We're not in any danger of losing any hit points or taking any penalties to our abilities. At least not yet, so let's enter the Veil Theater and we'll have a talk with Magda and her troop. Find out more about Liana and the goings-on in the back of the theater. Oh yeah, I forgot about Sophia. Why don't we level her up? Yes. Alright, so this should be her 20th level, so let's recommend the ability score, it improves intelligence, and then I guess we'll recommend her skills and put a bunch into craft weapon. Alright. And now we got a feat, a wizard feat to choose from. Recommends Silent Spell. Let's see, I think we should do Quick and Spell instead. And for the two spells that we're going to pick, let's do Whale of the Banshee because that's an instant death spell over an area. And I guess we could do one of these Big Bees. Maybe this Big B's Grasping Hand, this level 7 spell. Alright, that should about do it. And we got a bunch of spells to put into her spell book. So for level 9, why don't we... I guess we'll do that Whale of the Banshee that we just picked. And then we got two spells for level 8. I guess we'll do this Create Greater Undead. That'll probably create like a Vampire Warlock. Let's see, any like extend spells we could do? Could do that Bigby's that we just learned for an extend. Nah, why don't we do Sunburst? Okay, and then I guess we'll do this Big B's hand for level 7. Since we just picked it, we might as well prepare it. So let's go to level 6. Let's do Flesh to Stone. That'll allow us to petrify. And we got one more for level 5. Well, we could always use a Stone Skin. Especially with all the dispelling that's been happening. There's nothing good for Quicken. Eh, maybe we'll do Power Word Disable. That lowers an enemy's hit points a lot if they fail a save, and then we'll pick Stone Skin, and we got one more. What should we do?
Eh, maybe another one. Why not? We could always use stone skins. Yeah, we can always use another spider skin, too. Can never have too many buffs. And then we'll do another bear's endurance. That'll improve constitution. And she forgot to cast spider skin on herself, so... Step with me. We'll Come cast on. it right now. Follow along. And then we'll go have a word with Magda and the troops. So that's Sweet Wallace, that's Lothario, Amber Rose, and Vesper Jin, and that's Magda. And she doesn't have anything to steal, so let's talk to her. Pipe down, you rogues. Give some thanks to the men who saved our lives. Alas, our thanks are all we have to give. For a cruel-hearted dwarf hoards our meager profits. Aye, and squanders our earnings on love potions to steal the heart of sweet Wallace. Honestly, my lord, it's like chasing a pack of dockside waves with a broomstick. And that's when we're not trying to put on a play. Well, I'm glad you're safe. Were the witches holding you as prisoners? I think that'll give us a point to the good if we answer like that. Yep, sure does. Only if sleep is a cage and the dreamer a captive. An enchanted sleep with dreams of witches asking questions about our poor Lyanna. They found naught besides grief. Lyanna was our white lady of the Vale, and not so easily forgotten. There's not one of us who didn't love that woman, but she'd been acting strange, it's true. And the blood, Magda, those ghastly droplets of red upon her white robe. Oh, really? Hmm, I'd nearly forgotten the blood. Perhaps you'd better tell me. No more than a few days before you saved our hides, my lord. Lyanna comes bursting from that shadow door of hers, all covered in blood. Covered in blood, aye. Not a drop of it hers. And before that, I saw the other woman hanging about. The Red Road Lady. Bald as a squalling babe. The both of them were up to some sort of mischief. That's all the Red Lady was good for, if you ask me. Probably behind the doors of that secret room. I saw Lyanna's operating table. I think that may have been my blood on her robes. Extracting the shard. Your blood and cutting you, mayhap? Magda, what if we had been harboring some mad vivisectionist? Poof. Lyanna was no monster, Lothario, and you know it well. Sheltering the likes of us for twenty years, and never an unkind word, a bit odd at times, but never a monster. A Red Robe Lady? What else do you know about her? Only what my eyes have seen. Her face was like Lyanna's so much that I thought them sisters, and her head was all covered with runes. I wonder if she was from my academy. This might explain how Lyanna was known to my mother. I saw her but twice. No, make it thrice. The first time was years ago. I awoke to voices in Leanna's bedroom, so I peered inside, thinking it might be robbers again. But instead, who do I see but a red robe lady, chatting away with Leanna? I'm certain they knew I was watching. Scared me silly, you understand. Red robes mean naught but trouble. But Leanna trusted her, so I let the matter pass. I saw her a second time, perhaps a year ago, before the two of them disappeared for a long while. And the third time? That was just before the wizards came. I saw the red lady near the portal, when Lyanna came bursting out of her room, all covered in blood. This secret room, how would I get inside? All you would need is the key, and I have it right here. When the wizards came, Lyanna pressed it into my hand and told me to keep it safe. I'd half a mind to swallow the key, and make those wizards go picking through my innards for it. Here's the key, but I'll not vouch for y your safety. If you're bent on going inside, I've never so much as peeked b 
beneath the door. Where is the secret room? You'll have to pass through the shadow door into the reflection of Leanna's bedroom. On the east side of the, the room, there's a door, and she's always kept it locked. That's the secret room. The one she wouldn't show me. I have a few other questions before I go. And our Magda has answers, no doubt. Our fair little maiden couldn't, can't stop talking about you, she can't. Hush, you rogue. Ignore them, my lord, and perhaps they'll go away. I've been trying for a decade. When I saved you from the Thaeans, did Lyanna really know I'd be coming? So she said, a man will be coming, looking for me. You're not to turn him away, Magda, even if he's angry, even if you fear for my life. But I couldn't tell you how she knew, my lord. Our white lady was generous with everything except for secrets. Can you tell me anything else about Lyanna? I could tell you how her eyes look old, how she never quite remembered to brush her hair, and how stories of doomed love would never fail to bring her to tears. Lyanna had a hardness in her, it's true. A metal that wasn't born of Rashomon or any decent land. She'd suffer in her time, but this theater softened her as years went by. And what about the Red Lady who would visit her? As for that one, she could drown herself in the river, or in her own blood, as she pleases. You'll have to pardon our sweet Magda. She's a, she's but a tiny lass, and her heart is very small. There's no room inside for good manners. Poof. The Red Lady drove Lyanna to her death, and brought those wizards upon us. You can trust in that. Remind me, how do I find Lyanna's secret room? You'll have to pass through the shadow door into the reflection of Leanna's bedroom. Yeah, we've already read that. That's the secret room. Yeah. What kind of plays do you perform here? We try to do the finer plays. Cormorian dramas or the comedies of Bess and Moot. But the merchants prefer Red Wizard Follies. Sometimes our Vesper will write us something original. And he's promised Sweet Magda a starring role in his next romantic tragedy. Poof. The thought of me in a love scene. Imagine. Do you sell any hats or masks? We have no shortage of such things, though most of it's rubbish. Stuffed under mattresses, pile in trunks. Here, have a look. And pardon the dust. Alright, so you can buy stuff here. Most of it's useless. Just outfits that'll change your look, but won't give you any bonuses. Oh, here's a Nymph Cloak plus six. That might be useful for Gan. Prove his charisma. Thavian Circlet. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Improves intelligence by two. And improves saves by one. And improves concentration by one. But other than that, everything's pretty cheap. Got a ring of wizardry and a wand of fear. What are you doing with that? Oh, here's a lesser magic bag. And a charm of opening. But we don't need that. We'll buy this. And we will give it to Sophia. That should pretty much do it. I guess we'll give these essences that we got to Sophia as well. Alright. So, let's be off, shall we? It's still pretty much noon, so we might as well go into the shadow plane in the back. Check out that room that we just got the key for. No, that, we don't want to look in there. We want to go to the portal here by the mirror. Alright. Yeah, here we are. Now, if you remember, there was a locked door right up here, so let's go click on it. And we use the key. Now we can open it up. So let's go on inside. This room is a nexus of portals, although their energy seemed to flow through the golem here. Interesting. Uh, thank you. I was not aware of this place, but someone had taken great pains to build this secret passageway amongst the plains. Be careful. At times, portals can be used for disposing of unwanted visitors, and I sense some of these portals have been purposely sealed. 
Alright, so let's check out all these portals. We got the first door, incoming visitors. Then we got the second door for containment. Then we got the third door for disposal. And the fourth door is for outgoing. Well, that's kind of interesting. I guess we're supposed to talk to this golem. And we'll do that, but it looks like we got some stuff here. So let's grab this scroll. Greater planar binding. Conjuration, that means Sophia has no hope of using it. So I guess we'll just keep it until our use magic device gets high enough. And then we got a book here, The Wisdom of Imith Yabog. It's uh, the collected sayings and stories of a revered Rashemi witch. So spoke Imith Yabog. In my youth, the Spirit Eater curse was said to be rampant in the woodlands of the north. I was sent from Erling with three of my Hathren sisters to seek the truth of these rumors. Outside the great forest, we came upon a fleeing mass of simple folk who spoke fearfully of a foul cult. Men and women who had begun to worship the Spirit Eater as a god, who passed its power amongst themselves and went into the deep forest to feed, were chasing the villagers' steps. We soon came upon the encampment of these wicked folk, taking them by surprise and slaying many. Only four managed to escape us, fleeing into the deep forest. One of these bore the dark hunger of a Spirit Eater, and she devoured two of my sisters before she made her escape. My remaining sister and I dared not follow but we learned much from the remains of their camp. These folk were unlike others afflicted by the curse. Indeed, they referred to their dark hunger as the gift, and we discovered that many of those we had taken for Roshemi were shape-shifted Uthraki. The Uthraki worshipped the one who possessed the gift, and had learned much lore of the Spirit Eater to pass on to others who bore the hunger and reveled in it as they did. Oh, interesting. Okay, maybe we'll keep that in mind. There's a group of shapeshifters called the Uthraki who worship the Spirit Eater as a god. And then we got some chests here. Let's open one. Disarming trap. Oh, I guess these are trapped. Okay. It's kind of hard to see that they are. So let's examine them. Because when they glow red in this black and white environment, it doesn't really show up too well. So the DC is 13. So let's try to recover the trap instead of disarming it and we got it and we got 100 XP and that gives us enough XP to level up so we'll do that after we see what's inside here and we got 54 XP for unlocking it which levels up Kaelin okay so we got the quarterstaff remembrance and a bunch of gold almost 3300 so let's examine the trap on this chest and the DC is also 13 so let us recover it. And we got another 100 XP, and then we'll unlock it and probably get another 54. And we do. So let's open this up, and we get about 3,800 gold and another gray robe of the Arch Magi. Well, I guess we'll be selling that as well. So, since we had two characters level up, let's level up right now. So let's improve everything that's 25 up to 26, and that will leave us with four more skill points. So let's bump up search and spot to 19, so they're even with everything else at 19, and then we'll improve use magic device, and we'll improve disable device, so we can have a better shot of disarming and recovering traps and then we get another feat unfortunately we don't have enough dexterity to get the perfect two weapon fighting that I've wanted to get so we might as well just take another great dexterity and that'll give us another point to dex so our dex now is 27 to me, my allies, I, I shall guess we'll leave. level up Kaylin the Dove now. And we'll recommend. And she takes a feat, and it recommends toughness. Well, that would give her a lot of hit points, but is there something better that we can do? Why don't we go down to these defined feats. And... 
sacred purification. All living creatures heal 1d8 plus your charisma bonus, and all undead take that much damage for a turn attempt. Well, that sounds somewhat useful. I think we'll take it. And then I think we will put it into our quick keys. So let's move the axe over. We'll move that down there, and let's scroll down to the divine feats. And there it is, sacred purification. Now, I wonder why a number's not coming up in the bottom right of it, like the other turn attempts. And then we'll put the bow there. And that'll do it. And then we'll talk to this golem in the next episode. What, do you what will he say? Find out next time. This is Big Los signing off. Thanks for watching. See you next time, man. Tango and Buendia.